Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Suguru Yamamoto from Niigata, Japan. I would like to talk about the pathophysiology of dialysis related amyloidosis, focusing on the formation of beta 2 microglobulin related amyloid fibrils. Dialysis related amyloidosis, DRA, is a severe systemic disorder associated with end stage kidney disease. It involves the accumulation of beta 2 microglobulin, beta 2M, and molecular interactions leading to amyloid fiber formation. This condition can result in various complications, including carpal tunnel syndrome, disruptive spongular astrophaty, and multi-organ dysfunction. In this presentation, I will emphasize the pathophysiology of DRA, particularly the process of beta-2M amyloid fiber formation. In patients with end-stage kidney disease, circulating beta-2M level increase, and long-term diet treatment develop DRA. However, not all patients with high serum level of beta-2M and long-term diet treatment develop DRA. This suggests that other clinical factors play a role in the development of DRA in addition to the accumulation of beta-2M with long-term diet treatment. Amyloid fibers are composed of precursor proteins with a specific beta seed structures. In DRA, beta-2M is a precursor protein that forms protofilaments and amyloid fibers. Amyloid fiber formation is sought to follow a nucleus-dependent polymerization model. Native precursor proteins undergo conformational changes to form oligomers, even though this is not thermodynamically favorable. Short fibers then rapidly grow by adding more monoids. End-stage kidney disease leads to the accumulation of beta-2 monomers, resulting in the formation of amyloid fibers in DRA. This process involves interactions between biological molecules and beta-2 monomer and amyloid fibers. When uremic serum from hemodialysis patient interacts with recombinant beta-2 monomers in vitro, it triggers amyloid fiber formation, unlike serum from non-CKD patients. Carpatone syndrome is a major clinical feature of DRA. Cartilage tissues contain an extracellular metric made up of collagen and proteoglycans. These proteoglycans include glycosaminoglycans and core proteins. It's possible that collagen, proteoglycans, and glycosaminoglycans are involved in amyloid genesis. In vitro studies have shown that beta-2M can interact with collagen-1. Atomic force microscopy reveals that beta-2M monomer binds to collagen-1. Collagen-1 can change the conformation of beta-2M. This interaction enhances amyloid fiber formation. So beta-2M binds to collagen-1, altering its conformation and promoting amyloid fiber formation. Heparin, a glycosaminoglycan, enhances the extension of beta-2M amyloid fibrils. The more heparin is added, the more it binds to the fibrils. Similar effects are observed with other glycosaminoglycans, like chondroitin sulfate and dermatin sulfate. Then, stabilizing fibers with glycosaminoglycans is crucial for DRA progression. Previous in vitro studies suggest the presence of various biological molecules that can either accelerate or inhibit amyloid fiber formation. Therefore, therapeutic approaches to treat DRA involve removing excess beta-2 monomer through blood purification treatment and inhibiting the interaction between biological molecules and beta-2 monomer and amyloid fibers. Tissues in beta-2 amyloid regions may contain numerous molecules that influence amyloidogenesis. In summary, I have presented about pathophysiology of DRA focused on beta-2M-related amyloid fiber formation. In this reaction, accumulation of beta-2M with end-stage kidney disease, conformational changes of beta-2 monomer, and stabilization of amyloid fibers with biological molecules are the essential. 
Further studies will be needed to understand the detailed pathophysiology in the tissues, and physicians should consider how to treat DRA. Thank you so much for your listening.